So I'm just going to come right out and say that some of your guys' book recommendations are a gift from God. We're reviewing one today, and thank you, Matthew Bryan, for your recommendation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Book Cafe. We review books, talk fantasy, and interview authors and editors. If you're new here, consider subscribing, and if you're a veteran, welcome back. A few months ago, I reviewed Jim Butcher's Codex Alera, and Matthew Bryan commented, Hey, great, great review. I was wondering if you'd consider reading The Tiger's Daughter. Well, Mr. Bryan, I not only considered reading it, I read the whole thing and decided to do a review. And let me just say, your recommendation was amazing. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, I would love to take them. Let's start with the basics. The Tiger's Daughter is set in an empire inspired by China, with a little bit of Mongolia off to the side. The two main characters are the princesses of each kingdom. Shizuka, the Eternal Empress, the heir to the throne of Hokkaido, and Shefali, future Karsa of the Koran Steppes. Despite the fact that both of their mothers were generals on opposite sides of a war that killed hundreds, their mothers are best friends. And when the two girls are born, there are a series of omens that indicate that their, their fates are linked, intertwined. As they grow up, they begin discovering that they have a series of unnatural talents and abilities that outright break what a human is supposed to be able to do and decide that it is their destiny to travel to the north of Hakado and fight the demons that are slowly creeping southward. I stated in a previous video that there are certain things for which I am an absolute sucker. Um, I love romance, especially very well done romance. I love Asian-inspired fantasy, and I love badass women. There are other things, but those are three of the boxes that The Tiger's Daughter ticks. This book has the kind of writing that eats you alive. I'd put it one or two steps below Naomi Novik, which if you spend enough time watching this channel, you will know is extremely high praise. And overall, there's a lot of good things to be said about this book. I love the Shizuka Shefali dynamic. I love both characters. I loved Shizuka's sort of endearing arrogance and, and the way she refused to let things such as propriety or laws stop her from helping people. And I loved Shefali's determination and devotion. They're incredibly well-rounded characters. Their parents are really interesting. Any character who stays in the book for more than two chapters ends up being very well-rounded and surprising the hell out of you. But the Tiger's Daughter is primarily a love story between these two women. How they grew up together, how they fell in love, how they were forced apart, but you you see them from the first time they meet in childhood, and so the relationship has time to grow in the most beautiful way. And the way that the growing relationship is contrasted against the crumbling empire and Shizuka's uncle's mismanagement of the empire. There seems to be this whole theme where bitterness begets bitterness. So when foolish or disgusting or malicious people are allowed to be in positions of power, even an empire can crumble. And love is the major force against that, pushing back against that, pushing for renewal. There's a certain ambiguity as to what the two women are. It's clear they're not entirely human, and Shizuka believes that they are incarnate gods, but it's never explicitly stated what exactly they are. And that ambiguity does a lot to sell their otherworldliness. If it were outright stated that yes, these two are gods, you'd sort of lose some of that wonder, some of that mystique about it. Instead, you're left with little clues, like they, they kill a tiger together at eight years old. An extremely impressive feat, but possible if you're lucky enough. And as they grow up, they start pushing more and more into impossibility until you get something in flashback that's like, wait, that's not even luck. That's physically impossible, what they just did. It's, it's, it's fascinating watching their abilities grow and not knowing how it works and knowing that they don't know how it works. There's a lot of world building that happens without a lot of backstory, which I thought was an excellent decision. Because the characters don't understand things like where the demons come from, or if they do understand, they don't really bother to explain it to anyone. 
uh, the reader gets a very similar sense of fear that the characters would get when confronting a demon. You don't know how powerful they are. You don't know what they're capable of. Neither do the characters. So even though the story is mostly being told by letters from Shefali, it still seems like she could die at any moment. There is one problem I have with this novel, is that it engages in a great deal of as-you-know-ism. Shefali is retelling Shizuka things that Shizuka not only knows, but likely knows better than Shefali. And I understand why it's important for the story, for the reader to know that. But when Shefali is writing it, it seems kind of incongruous. It seems out of place and a little bit, a little bit jarring. It, it took me out of the story a bit. But literally every other thing about this book is incredible. So, um, Mr. Brian, you will be delighted to know that I am rating Tiger's Daughter at Collect Every Edition. This book is excellent. I loved it. I, I love nearly every word. After watching this video, you don't want to go get a copy? Then I don't think I've done my job. <laughs> it's an excellent book. And if you've ever enjoyed anything I've reviewed, you want to read this. Have you read The Tiger's Daughter? What, do you, what did you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Share your experience in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to show it by clicking the like button, click here on the dragon to subscribe, and here for more videos like this from the Book Cafe. After my review of Good Omens, enough of you convinced me to read Discworld that that's what I'm reviewing on Saturday. So until then, read good fantasy.